I want to legalize prostitution, another way to raise taxes. Yo guys, what's up? It's EricTube101 here, coming at you guys today with another video. And before we get into this one, I just wanted to say that, like before I do every single political video, or basically whenever I talk about politics in any social media, I always have like this gut feeling that I shouldn't upload anything and that uh, you guys don't want to see politics. However, when I always upload the stuff, it typically works out good and I seem to have a following that is mainly under one political uh, spectrum. But comment down below and let me know if you guys want to see political content or not. So that way I can uh, rest assured either way uh, if you guys want to see it or not and then yeah, but without further ado, let's get raw into the video. So this is entitled an Eric to presidency. Basically, if I was running in 2020 election, what would I do? And of course, I'm not even old enough to run as president yet. I, there's another, you know, good 20 years before I can run for the president of the United States. Just in metaphorically speaking, what my campaign would look like in a 2020 presidential run. Uh, and I wouldn't run in 2020 because I'm a, I'm a Republican and you don't run against the current sitting president in your own party. That's just, it's both common courtesy and it's just retarded to run against the current sitting president because re-election chances for any president is always high, no matter who it is. So yeah, but let's just get right into the video. So my policy number one is called the Trojan Over Abortion Act. And what this would do is it would ban all non-life-threatening abortions. And so in which case, if the mother's life is at stake, uh, they can get an abortion. Uh, and Democrats like to push that a lot as like a fear-mongering tool to allow all abortions. But in reality, this is a very, very small percentage of abortions along with rape and incest are very small, 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 small. Um, and for those asking, I would actually not allow a rape, uh, thing in my abortion law, uh, because a rape clause in my abortion law, I said rape thing. Uh, I was trying to look for the word. It was rape clause. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't allow that because Rape is obviously a very bad thing, uh, and I believe that all rapists should basically be given the life or the death penalty. Um, but here's the thing: when you kill your baby because you got raped, that's not going to help the mother out mentally. No mother has ever became more mentally stable after killing her child. Uh, there's no factual evidence to back up that. You won't have the PTSD or any sort of trauma effects after getting the abortion. There's no proof to back up that you're going to be less sad that you got raped after you kill your baby. Um, and all that really does, getting the abortion really does, is it creates a second victim. Because now not only are you the victim of a rape, your innocent child is now the victim of murder at your hands. And... That really isn't fair because even though it was conceived by rape, that has nothing to do with the baby itself and the baby itself did not cause that rape. So punishing the baby uh, and by murder, by the death penalty, uh, is really just a bizarre thing to do. Uh, and in the case of incest, I would allow a clause for it. But here's the thing, Democrats also uh, push uh, rape and incest. But rape cases that cause pregnancies and lead to an abortion, that's under less than 1% of abortions. And incest abortions are less than 0.001% of all abortions. I mean, no matter what you think, uh, the fact is, is that incest is really rare. And incest pregnancies are especially really, really rare. Um... No one's really out here getting their sisters pregnant. And that seems like an obvious statement to make. But a lot of people seem to have this belief that incest abortions are a common thing. And that's a common percentage of abortions. Like the 
very high percent of abortions is just simply feminist and leftists who don't want a baby or aren't ready or aren't financially capable of having a child. Um, and if you don't want a baby, wear a condom is a really easy solution to that. Um, or follow God's teachings and wait till marriage to have sex. Uh, it's re also a pretty good solution. I'm not necessarily going to say that's an easy solution because obviously it's not. I mean, uh, but yeah. So basically the Trojan over abortion policy would tear down all uh, women's clinics and abortion clinics and every single Planned Parenthood would be torn down and we would fund the Trojan company to build up their own facilities and offer free forms of birth control to both men and women who came in seeking for it. This would be paid for by the taxpayer. Uh, and before you get all angry, you're already paying for abortions. I mean, Planned Parenthood is government funded. Uh, so funding the Trojan company to do more and offer free birth control would both stop abortions uh, because it would become illegal. So we had to offer something else in its place. Uh, so we would be offering f uh, free forms of birth control to those who can't afford it. Um, and yeah, so this would hopefully prevent unwanted pregnancies because anybody, uh, regardless of age, there would be no sort of screening or anything when you go into these clinics. You can get any form of birth control you would like at these clinics. And that would be the solution or replacement to Planned Parenthood. Uh, not necessarily Trojan. It could be any company that wants to step up and do it. Uh, preferably Trojan because if you just look at company morals and how Trojan advertises them, themselves, uh, Trojan is a, actually a pretty great company. Uh, they use comedy in their advertisements, uh, and they, they do try to have their morals as a sex company. Along with Pornhub, you always see in the news for giving tons and tons and tons of money to charities and raising a lot of money to, for charities. So companies like that deserve to have a lot more power than companies like Planned Parenthood to where it's like, if you disagree with me, you're a Nazi and you should die. I don't agree with uh, companies like that at all. So that's why I call it Trojan over abortion. And obviously it's just a birth control reference. So policy number two would be legalized marijuana in all 50 states with a 10% tax. Polls now show that over 50% of Republicans agree on this, and multiple states have legalized it, having mainly positive effects in those states. Um, and you know, roughly 250 million tax dollars to every state that has legalized it. It's obviously a more libertarian approach to let people do what they want. Uh, and weed really doesn't affect that many other people. Of course, the common counter argument is that driving under the influence uh, would happen. But driving under the influence of other substances is already a thing. So it might, it, it's not really going to increase people that drive. Because people that drink and drive are going to be the same people that get high and drive. Uh, obviously doing either and driving is not safe and should be illegal and driving under the influence would remain illegal. I don't think it would really increase though because it's, again, it's the same type of people that would do both. Uh, most people have the common sense to not get behind the wheel when they're doing those type of things. And obviously both of them do affect your driving statistics show that, but people should have the, um, choice to do what they want inside of their home. And I know a lot of people are going to say my body, my choice due to the first one. After I just said the choice to inject marijuana into the, not inject uh, smoke marijuana. Uh, but you know, put it into their body. Um, but see the thing with my body, my choice and abortion stance, um, is that it's not actually your body at that point when you're going into cutting up someone else's body that's not your body it's someone else's heartbeat it's someone else's limbs it's living inside of your body for the first nine months of pregnancy 
but it still has its own heartbeat, you're still ending someone else's heartbeat when you get an abortion. So that's why my body, my choice isn't a good counter argument for abortion, even though my body, my choice is a pretty good argument for every other libertarian policy out there. So yeah, I would legalize marijuana at a 10% tax across all 50 states. Like I said, this has rolled in around 250 million tax dollars for the first states that have done it. It's worked out uh, mainly successfully. I mean, there is a few drawbacks, you know, driving under the influence, etc. But that kind of stuff is already happening. Uh, and I don't think people do have morals when it comes to this type of stuff. So, yeah. So, going into my third policy, it would be to cut military spending by 75%. And the reason I chose 75% is because, say, our uh, major military uh, competitor, Russia, uh, they spend less than or around 10% of what we're spending on our military. You know, they're only spending around $60 million. $60 billion, not million, my bad. Uh, obviously, it's billion. And we're in the $600 billion, $630 billion range. So it's around 10% of what they're spending. <clears throat> they're spending around 10% of what we're spending. So if we cut it by 75%, we would still have the biggest military on the face of the planet. Uh, and if we just put it into more smarter investments, because now, now we waste way too much money with our military. For instance, people go into our military just to get free healthcare so they can get like transgender uh, surgeries and stuff like that that really shouldn't be happening in the military if we just had a military of soldiers and weapons just like russia has we would have a much better military for a lot less money if we just cut all the stupid stuff out of the military that's unnecessary um like why do we need to be spending over 600 billion dollars when russia only speaks spends 60 billion and is seen as scarier to the uh, than the United States, or just as scary as the United States. Um, to many, many countries, including United States citizens, would consider Russia as a major military threat. Uh, and also, this has to do a lot with mentality as well. See, if you mess with Russia or any of Russia's allies, uh, they will straight up tell you that they are going to kill you. Uh, when you mess with America or America's allies, it's like, uh, okay, let's form a peace treaty, make some trade deals, blah, 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 blah. There's nothing really done uh, when you mess with America. America has been really weak when, with our military ever since we basically nuked Japan. Uh, and Russia is one of the few countries left that has a really strong stance on using military power against other nations and i fully support that we need to have a strong stance we need to tell these other countries that they can't mess with us and we will destroy them and i love what trump said with iran that if iran did anything to us it would be the end of iran that was a great response because now iran is scared right and we didn't have to spend any money for our president to say that when vladimir putin says that he will kill you uh, he's he's going to come after you. There's nothing that's that's not a threat. That's not fear mongering. That he's stating the truth right there. And if our country was just like that, and we had a strong military, strong military mindset to where we're not afraid of hurting those who hurt us, when we're not working out peace treaties and trade deals with those that hurt us, such as the Middle East. When we're actually uh, capable of stepping up and doing something to uh, defend ourselves and defending our citizens, that's when we're going to have a strong military, and we don't need six hundred billion dollars to do that, because China spends around a hundred and fifty million or something like that. But here's the thing: China's military isn't really that scary. Their economy is scary, and if we drew out of China, we would kill China's, you know, economy like that. China would kill themselves if we went out of China and stopped doing trade deals altogether. China would literally die in seconds if we stopped supporting them financially. And so we don't really need to worry about China military-wise. 
because a war between the U.S. and China would completely murder their economy. It would hurt ours for a little while, but eventually our companies would just come back over here, and then we would have so much jobs, it would be ridiculous, and we'd have such a great economy uh, if we did that, but China would never recover from that, really, because China doesn't really have their own companies that sell to their own citizens and pays their citizens a fair wage. They have American companies that pay kids like three cents an hour and then sends their products elsewhere. Uh, so if we pulled out of China, if if like Nike and other major companies like that got themselves out of China, China would be dead, basically. So we could economically kill China. We don't need the military power to kill China. So again, that's kind of irrelevant. So the $60 billion mark is a lot, was where most Western countries stay at. Uh, every other Western nation is basically between 40 and 70 billion. So there's no reason that we need to be over 600 billion. That's insane. And if we cut it by 75%, we could still be the strongest country on the earth by far. So going into number four, I know this is going to be a more controversial one. But you really have to think of why you're going to be against what I'm about to say. So number four is we need to block Amazon in the United States. So basically, United States citizens couldn't even get on Amazon without a VPN server, obviously. Um, but if and then it's going to cut down Amazon sales by a lot. There could be some illegal ones. I don't really care about that. It's still going to slash Amazon sales over 95% if we completely ban the website. And... The reason why we need to do that is a lot of people say that Amazon is convenient, but while being convenient and you can order anything, have it shipped to your doorsteps in three days time or, you know, one night shipping, whatever you, whatever you choose to do, it doesn't really matter. But Amazon pays 0% in taxes. They employ very little people. When was the last time you were inside of an Amazon store in a small town? I've been inside of a Walmart. I've been inside of Target. I've been inside of Myers. I've never been inside of an Amazon store. And that is very scary that the biggest store in America has no stores. Uh, so we need to ban Amazon. They're paying zero in taxes. They're employing very few. Uh, they have really no entry level jobs available. Uh, they take they vacuum up a comfortable thirty percent of retail industry industry killing millions of jobs. The retail industry is on their way out. So many stores have to close because of Amazon competing with them. And that's what's really scary is they're completely killing our economy. But at the stake of convenience, most Americans don't really care. That most entry level jobs are on their way out. Most retail stores are on their way out. And what's Amazon doing for us? They're paying zero in taxes. They're employing very few. They're not helping America at all. In fact, they're literally murdering America. But America doesn't care at the stake of convenience and ordering unique items. Uh, because Amazon has everything they can't really find anywhere else. And I understand that it is convenient to shop at Amazon, but at the same time, is it really worth killing your own economy at your own convenience? It's completely ridiculous that we're killing all these entry level jobs and we're killing every other retail chain out there just for one and just for your convenience. Uh, so yeah, I would totally ban Amazon Everybody's just like, oh, make Jeff Bezos pay taxes. You can't do that. Because if even if you force Jeff Bezos to pay taxes, which no one will, all he's going to do is be like all these other CEOs and just move to China. I mean, it's not really going to be that tough for Jeff Bezos to escape paying high taxes like every single Democrat wants to do. Make Jeff Bezos give away 90% of his bank account. Uh, and have the American economy rely just on Jeff Bezos, which is a crazy uh, thing to say because li that's literally what they want to do. When you ask a Democrat how they want to pay for college or health care or anything else in this country, how they want to pay for socialist propaganda, they, they always say tax Jeff Bezos. Well, what happens when Jeff Bezos moves to Beijing? 
I mean, that's just that's going to happen eventually. But yeah, so we need to ban Amazon, give these retail stores a chance, and or or I'm also fine with telling Amazon that if they don't build at least, you know, fifteen thousand brick stores in America and actually sell their products in small towns, then we're going to block your website. Or we're still going to block their website, but they can have their brick stores. It's probably the best solution to that. But we cannot have their website up and running. We can't have Amazon killing the American economy while paying zero in taxes and employing very few. It just doesn't work. So number five would be end the wage tax. Uh, and this would be done by both the marijuana tax and just raising land taxes in general. But in a very depressed America where, you know, the suicide rate is skyrocketing four times the amount of suicides than there was in the 1990s, um, we obviously need to do something to make the average American happier and I think a great step to that would be the, at making the average American happier to go to work. And a great solution to that would be telling Americans that they actually earn their paycheck. And that every penny that they earn, they will keep. And a lot of people think that companies should just uh, pay their employees $15 minimum wage. And that a $15 minimum wage should be enforced throughout the entire country. And while that might work for Walmart, and Walmart typically does pay their employees pretty good compared to other uh, smaller chains, the your local mom and pop shop cannot afford to keep all their employees, whether it be like four to five per little business, and at, at double or you know at basically double the rates. You say if your minimum wage is eight bucks or nine bucks right now, if you double that, basically. There's no way all these small businesses can afford that. They're going to be cutting basically half of their employees to be able to afford that. Um, and then you're going to see thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people making minimum wage get cut off because really no business can afford $15. Especially your local mom and pop shops, like I said, you know, uh, McDonald's and Walmart, they can probably afford it at major profit losses. But even then, they're probably going to cut a lot of their employees and replace them with robot, with robots that don't need to get paid at all because that's how greed works and that's how capitalism works. And there's no way that any business is going to be paying their employee all of their employees $15. And we will literally see millions of jobs be lost if... We force every company to double their employees' wage. So a great solution to that would be ending the wage tax to where employees would still make a lot more than they make now because Uncle Sam wouldn't be taking their cut of their check. And if you look at your like check stub, how much the government takes is practically half of your paycheck, you know. And it's absolutely insane how much the government takes. So if we stopped that, Americans would still take home a lot more. And then they could put in a lot more to our economy. They would shop more. They would go out more. Businesses in return would re make a lot more. And we would truly be living a lot better of an age where Americans would be richer. They could spend more. They could put more back into the economy, which would also uh, better the American economy of when Americans have more to spend. And Americans would also be happier. Crime would probably go down because people would be making more. Obviously, we know that crime happens when people are poor. Basically, when people can't afford things, they tend to make stupid decisions. And when people have money to where they're comfortable, they tend to think harder and um, be more creative, be harder thinkers, be harder workers. And yeah, so I think ending the wage tax... Uh, letting every American that know that when they go to work, they are earning a hundred percent of their check, and they will be richer. Uh, that's going to be going a lot. That's going to 
go a lot towards uh, having a better American culture where people are happier to wake up in the morning. And it's also going to be great for the American economy because when people are getting paid double the amount, they can spend double the amount. So businesses are going to be skyrocketing under this because they will get paid a lot more, have a lot more customers be willing to spend their money. For example, uh, AMC would probably double in profits because people could go out to movies a lot more when they're making twice the amount. Um, you know, stuff like that. It's just It would boom the American economy. It would also boom the American culture. And I think that would just be great for American culture. I don't really see anything against ending the wage tax. Again, that could be paid for by multiple different taxes raising. And I think Americans wouldn't really care. Um, you know, if we have this marijuana tax to where a state is making $250 million off of ma uh, marijuana, that's going to go into replacing the wage tax. And among other stuff as well, like uh, raising land taxes and raising other taxes as well. But it'll still be a lot cheaper to the average American citizen. And last but not least, I want to legalize prostitution, another way to raise taxes. And also, men and women are also going to take part in this already. So you really have to ask yourself as an American, even if you're against abortion, would you rather have a pimp or a cop protect women from getting raped? Or, or anything else, really. Because would you rather have cops protect women or would you rather have uh, pimps protect women? That's really what you got to ask yourself. We can also raise taxes if we're doing this through corporations. Uh, the women could get paid more. They could be a lot safer. Um, the only thing going against this as well is Christian morals and values. But here's the thing, uh, in 2016, we legalized gay marriage, and gay marriage and gay sex is now okay, So, and we declared that love is love, uh, per se, so there's nothing necessarily wrong with prostitution uh, under that sense, because all other Christian morals have basically been stomped on, so if gay marriage is legal, according to Christian According to the Bible, if that's what we're going by, it's basically the same thing. It's, there's both still sins. And, again, who really cares? Uh, who, If other people partake in it, I'm not really sure how that would affect other American citizens. If two Americans are, you know, hooking up for money at, through a major corporation, uh, I just don't see how that's going to affect American citizens that much. You could say that's going to affect marriages, but again, most Americans do have morals and values, uh, so I don't think the average happy married couple would partake in this. Uh, it's obviously going to be up to the American citizens, but we should allow citizens to have that right and that choice to to uh, live their life by any mean by any means necessary. I think legalizing. Uh, prostitution would be a great libertarian uh, value, or not value, but a uh, policy. And again, this would help raise taxes. Um, and again, it's not like, it's, and a lot of people are going to say that this is uh, demeaning to women. It's not really, because the women who are choosing to do it are still going to be the only women who are prostitutes. Uh, it's just that they're going to have more protection and they're going to have more stability and they're actually going to be able to be safe uh, in their line of work. So that's going to be the only thing that changes. Changes. It's not like we're going to force women into prostitution. So it's not demeaning to women at all to protect them while they're doing what they want to do. And here's the thing also is that escorts and porn stars already exist to get paid for sex for uh, sex and sexual work. Uh, so, again, it's not going to be that much different if we already have escorts and porn stars who get paid for this line of work. 
So adding prostitution, again, isn't going to be stomping on morals and values all that much. And again, there's not really any specific reason not to do this besides uh, morals and values. But with gay marriage, free pornography, uh, escorting, there's Christian morals in the sex world have already been completely stomped out. So it's not going to hurt that much and it could raise taxes and it will protect women and it will give people the right to live life how they choose to be fit. Um, and so that's why I think legalizing prostitution would be a pretty good policy to have. Obviously it's going to be very controversial. Uh, and let me know what you guys think about this policy and all the other policies I mentioned down in the comments and let me know once again do you guys want to see more videos like this in the future where i talk about anything political um because i feel like i'm pretty well at speaking political stuff i'm pretty well at speaking uh my political opinion uh nowadays because i've been doing it for a few years now um i know ben shapiro or anything but i'm i'm pretty comfortable voicing my opinion and voicing my political beliefs and I don't, I don't know. I feel like even if I say something controversial, I can typically back myself up because I don't typically say stuff just for the fun of it. Uh, and it helps when you're arguing, when you're arguing, if you actually believe what you're saying. Uh, I know I've been kind of stuttering and talking with like a lisp this video. For one, my voice hurts. And for two, it's a 30, it's a 32 minute long video. So to get all these words out, it's kind of difficult. But typically my videos aren't 32 minutes long. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please see me in the next one. Subscribe and comment down below your thoughts. And I'm out. Peace.